Hi guys, I'm Johnny Chivers and welcome to this YouTube channel. I'm a data engineer by trade with over 10 years experience, working Monday to Friday primarily in the financial services sector, five times AWS certified and I like nothing more in my free time than making videos for this very YouTube channel. So in this series we're going to take a look at Glue. We're going to go over the basic concepts of Glue, what it is, why we use it and when we use it. Then at the end of this video, I'll take you through what we're going to learn in the next kind of set of lessons. There'll be four or five in total, and it'll cover building an actual application using Glue itself. So let's just get right into it. What is AWS Glue? AWS Glue is a fully managed ETL, that's Extract, Transform, and Load service, brought to us by AWS. It's fully serverless out of the box, which means we don't have to manage any infrastructure. AWS look after this force. It consists of a central metadata repository known as the Glue Catalog. This holds information about data locations within AWS in a form of database and then tables. It also has a fully inbuilt Glue Studio, which is where we can develop ETL code. This can be self-generating or we can actually build our own scripts from scratch. This is in the form of either Python that runs on PySpark or Scala that runs on Spark as well. The Spark engine, as I said, is fully looked after by AWS. We just have to provision how many units of power or compute that we want to give our jobs. There's also a native scheduler built in the Glue, and this can be used to either run jobs on like a time basis, so run my job every hour or run my job at 8 a.m. in the morning, or you can schedule in an event-driven manner, where if a job completes, it can then kick off another job. But why use Glue? So traditionally, to get the benefits of big data frameworks like Spark, we have to manage a lot of infrastructure. EMR abstracts some of this away from us if we were to use Elastic MapReduce in AWS. But Glue goes a step further and actually just removes the entire cluster from the end user. AWS are provisioning Spark jobs under the hood for us when we submit our code. This becomes fully managed, so it removes that operational overhead of looking after the big data infrastructure, but more importantly, lowers that barrier to entry. So if you're a decent ETL coder already in any language, you can jump straight into AWS Glue and pick up the ropes. And then that also means if you're brand new to data engineering or indeed ETL, you've removed the barrier to entry for yourself because you don't have to look after any of that infrastructure straight out of the box. AWS are looking after that for you. And all you have to concentrate on is actually just coding. But when do we use AWS Glue? So this is a question I get asked quite a lot. And usually it's when do I use Glue and when do I use EMR? And the answer is it depends. So AWS Glue is a fully managed service that we don't have to look after the infrastructure. And that's perfect for a lot of day-to-day -day ETL jobs. So let's think about moving gigabytes of data or, or terabytes of data once an hour around AWS or maybe even streaming off Kafka into Glue and doing some ETL. That's where I feel AWS Glue really comes into its own because all we have to do is focus on writing that ETL code. There's none of the servers to provision. There's an inbuilt scheduler, so that's removed from us as well. And it just lowers that barrier to entry for yourself and others in your team. And you can just get on with actually getting that data from A to B. EMR on the other hand is a bit more complex to manage but you do get more fine-grained controls over the use of memory in EMR. So this is particularly important if you're running something at maybe like the tens of terabytes into the perabytes of scale. So let's say we had a big data calculation that one of our data scientists want to run and that could take maybe two days to calculate and it needs like a thousand node cluster. That's when EMR comes into its own. That's where we really need to head down that EMR route. But let's say we have a daily ingest job where we move data from our database into the cloud and then form a data lake around it. Well, that's where AWS Glue could be used. You can store the database connections in AWS Glue. You can set up a table where we drag the data into Glue. We can then transform that data within Glue itself and then populate the output table in the Glue Data Catalog and then let users search Glue Data Catalog to then query the data with Athena. So in summary, it really does depend on your use case. But think of Glue ETL for those kind of daily jobs that happen all the time. And I think of EMR for those really high memory, big throughput jobs that are a bit more ad hoc or run on a schedule, but we know we're going to need a lot of memory and control. What are we going to cover in this 101 series with AWS Glue? We're going to take a look on the first lesson at scheduling crawlers to actually look over our data and then registering that in the data catalog. Second lesson, we'll do some ETL on the Glue console so we can actually transform that data and store it somewhere else. Third lesson, 
we're going to take a look at the scheduler. So we'll look at doing some triggers, event based, time, bit of glue workflows. And in the last lesson, we're going to take a look at glue dev endpoints. This is a bit of a bonus where we can actually code locally and then test our scripts before deploying to AWS. It's not an essential, but it's pretty uh, interesting stuff if you work at a big organization and you want to have a more fluid kind of CI/CD pipeline.